down here. Yes, this is a very, very small office space. Have another drink. We're rolling, by the way. <laughs> hey, everyone. This is one of my spiritual brothers, Ty. We met at the gym first. Yeah, first, yes. At AMP up here on the Gold Coast. Um, were you, were we doing a class or did I just meet you in an open gym? Yeah, I think it's, I can't remember if it was an open class, uh, open, yeah, class or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, um, or just open gym. Gym, that's right. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so then after I got started with the podcast, you, you messaged me. Yes. And, um, it was really nice. <laughs> I really, yeah. really appreciated that. I just thought I'd let you know that I really enjoy listening to your podcast and, uh, because I do listen to a fair few podcasts, so I thought, you know, someone that close, like Burley, and I work with Burley, um, I thought, you know, and you started bringing the podcast, so I thought, you know, give you a bit of feedback. Yeah, that's really appreciated, I, I love that, that's really awesome, and um, and then from there, like, that just led to, it's been a little whirlwind since that, yeah. like, mm. what happened from there, we, we, we organised a catch-up, yeah. hung out, had a brought coffee. Of- yeah. First time ever. Great bulletproof coffee. <laughs> Shout out to Brio yes. at Treetops. Yes. Good Yummy. Coffee. Very yum. <laughs> really good coffee. <laughs> and quickly discovered that we had quite a lot in common in, in regards to our interest in spirituality and yeah. and the um, shall we say awakening in quotations. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So maybe to start off, we're gonna dive into spirituality today and have a bit of a chat about how we sort of came across it and what it means to us, our practices and experience with it, so on and so forth. Um, but for, for now, do you want to give everyone a little bit of an idea of your background and who you are? Yep, okay. Um, so, yeah, my name is Tide. Actually, my name is Holger Tide, so don't worry about it. Tide. Do you want to say that again? <coughs> a bit louder? Holger Tide. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so everyone calls me Tide, um, like the ocean, just because it's basically the meaning of my last name and uh, I'm originally from Germany came to Australia 14 years ago now and um, yeah and left like it is so yeah and um, you've been through it's been a bit of a journey to stick around here hasn't it like it has it has I mean on day one I knew that I'm going to stay here Um, basically because I got signs already in Germany back then that um, I was meant to come here. Um, I read a book called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. I think my brother loves that book, I think. I haven't read it yet. It's, good. it's a good read, yeah. And it's about signs and, um, yeah, basically listening to your gut. Mm. And a uh, short story, my friend back in Germany, told me about Australia, and the very, very next day I decided, okay, I need to get a sign of the universe um, that I need to go, or not. If I don't get a sign within 24 hours, I'm not going. And it basically took 23 hours. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a fridge magnet on the fridge of my best mate's, yeah, fridge, sorry. On the a fridge magnet? Yeah, a fridge <laughs> magnet on my best mate. Best mate's place. And cool. uh, yeah, and uh, the very next day I went and bought a ticket. And it was like Australia? <coughs> Sydney. Mate. Sydney, okay. Sydney, yeah. And yeah, the very next day I went and bought a ticket. Then I found out that I actually need a visa. I didn't know. <laughs> okay. it, believe it or not, that's how organized I was. Uh, that's the best way to live life, yeah, right? You just like go for it and it figure was, it out on the way. It was exciting. Yeah. It was exciting because that visa came out the day before my. So I was meant to come here, landed, mm. and literally fell in love with the place, with the people. The and landed in Sydney? No, no, I landed in Brisbane. Brisbane? Yes, I went oh. to Brisbane. Yeah. yeah. So you listened to the sign, but only part of it. <laughs> True. Actually, yeah. I'm thinking about it now. Damn it. <laughs> it's okay. So no, 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 we're glad. Right we're thing. glad. You did the right thing. You wouldn't be here otherwise. Well, who knows? Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Sydney. <clears throat> Big cities. Yeah. yeah. Plenty country, of them in Europe. I'm a country boy. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, me too, for sure. Yeah. Cool. So, 14 years, fast forward later. Yeah. And it's been a hell of a ride. 
It has been, yeah. Um, I had to study it first, as most overseas people do, mm. and, um, and that took a long time, cost a lot of money. And um, yeah, it was sponsored by a company. Uh, I was teaching theoretical and practical kung fu and service paradise. Cool. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was That's what I've always meant to ask you that since I've known you. What martial art? Well, I yeah. never thought to was ask. Wing Chun kung fu. Sweet. And uh, yeah, met a lot of nice people. Uh, it was good times. Uh, but then, unfortunately, the academy closed down. Oh, okay. And uh, I had 28 days to um, find something to stay in the country. Wow. And uh, yeah. Some, some, a place that would sponsor you? Or? Well, I probably could have done that. I didn't think that far though. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just looked for another course, something else to oh, study. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I studied uh, carpentry. So I'm mm. a carpenter by trade. And uh, I got my permanent residency. I became a carpenter. Yeah, nice. Really cool. Yep. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> oh, thanks. So am I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. All right. Okay, dude. So, <clears throat> the big spirituality. What a word. Yeah. I mean, there's a, we live in an age where there's a lot of misunderstood words and they're just words that are used in questionable ways and um, or, or just misunderstood. So... Let's just start with what it means to us. Like what, what does spirituality mean to you? To me, spirituality means living consciously mm. and creating your life yeah. as you go. Not just reacting to everything, everything that is happening around you, but acting. Mm. So you you're not just, yeah, basically react all the time. It's, it's more about choosing how you react to situations that, you know, will, in everyone's life, just to yeah. be, I don't know, you, know, you, you, have, you have, everyone has a, has a problem occasionally, but if you constantly get wound up about it, or, um, yeah, it's, it's not good. It's, it's about staying calm and living life to the best you can, mm. enjoying it. Basically, yeah, it's being the observer of, of your life, yeah, yeah, and um, and to, like I, I know what you're saying, like, there's um, but I mean that only in the sense that you can observe what's happening and then react to it in a more suitable way, maybe, or okay. a way that's more congruent with what you're trying to achieve in your life rather than, as you were saying, like, be so reactionary, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. So, I think for me, like, spirituality sort of really just. It's so hard to explain, but I think it really does mean consciousness. Yes, being conscious and being open and and tr like truly realizing and recognizing that we are a part of something so much greater yeah. than what we just can perceive with our you know sight, smell, touch. Absolutely, you know? I do. I do believe that there's something that is running the show behind. Mm. The curtain, sort of yeah. thing, and uh, yeah, I truly believe that. And yeah, we just got to listen to whatever is running in the background, so, which is to me personally, it's, it's it comes from me. I, I feel it, so I listen to the voice inside of my head and the feeling inside of my heart, mm. and this is what has guided me so far and will guide me for the rest of my life. Hopefully, mm. yeah, that's it. It's your north star, hey? Like, yeah. When, I mean, if you if you take a moment and stop and think about all the times in your life that you have, you have followed your gut, your intuition, or that little voice, or that whatever it was, when has it really led you astray? Like it, it knows best. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. It really does. Yeah, it's generally, the hardest part is generally having the faith and the courage to follow what, it, what it's telling you. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually noticed that... It's easier to notice when you don't follow. Yeah. Because then yeah. something goes wrong and you go, I should have listened. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> there you go again. You that thought was my something sign. was going to be exactly. a certain way and it yeah. just didn't turn out that way. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, sometimes because of the way we've been programmed, meaning 
we get told to be logical all the time. Mm. We, we need to, you know, we're involved. We need to be part of this world. Yeah. And we definitely haven't been taught, or I certainly haven't been yeah. at school or whatever, um, to, yeah, listen to my feelings. Yeah. I've been taught to not listen to them at all, to be honest. Yeah. Their feelings are just not real. And uh, we're mouths, mm. so we can't feel things. Yeah, exactly right. Um, it's been... Like just on that, it's it's this year, you know, has been like a major sh- shift year for me. Yeah. And um, I have been like consciously making an effort to allow myself to cry yeah. if that comes up. Yeah. And it hasn't much, but there's been a couple of times where I've felt that onset, and rather than fighting it, I've been I've been like, okay, relax, relax. And it's been amazing to witness how much of an effort it is for me to actually let that happen rather than just go put the walls up straight away and be like, just suck it in, mm. which is a really freeing feeling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with the crying, I don't, I don't know. I've never had a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty in touch. Uh, yeah. 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 Look, on, on the, as like a, like if on a generalized scale, I would say I'm probably similar. I've I've been pretty good with that in my life. Like I can I can certainly cry and like let it out, but it generally takes a little while of bottling up before it then all spills out. Like, but um, I just watch a Disney movie. You know, and I don't <laughs> <laughs> the waterworks yeah. are on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay Beautiful. though. It's okay. That's great, man. If you feel something, yeah, exactly. Let it flow. Like like there, it, like in that is spirituality. Is like expression. Yeah. I've like, noticed that if, if I keep tears in for too long, I turn angry. Hmm. And anger is is a self destructive emotion. It's that that no. and um, yeah, I, I don't like feeling it so mm. too much. And unfortunately, it comes up occasionally. But yeah, there's different ways of dealing with it. One of them is crying. Mm. If it you know hits the situation, fine. Sometimes it's just hitting a kick in the back, yeah. a punching bag, or, or going laughing. for a run. Force yourself to really laugh. I love when I'm angry. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I have <laughs> noticed, I've been making an effort with that as well. Like really? if I'm at work and something pisses me off, yeah. I'll just force laugh. Like at first, like I'll just be like, <laughs> and like make myself laugh. And then from that, it sounds so stupid that I end up genuinely laughing. I feel like the joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good way of like... Forcing myself to be like, oh, fucking, nah. and then because I sound like an idiot, I start laughing. Okay. So it kind of works, but. I won't say I will try it, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. So, so let's chat a bit about like sort of how we came across spirituality and, and our initial reaction to it and like, yeah, like how we, how we were introduced to it. <clears throat> well. All my life, I've always felt like there was something there. Mm. So when I was in school, it was called it God. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I used to go to church. Well, I was born Roman Catholic, so um, left church when I was, I think, sixteen or seventeen because I realized that it's, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. And I believe that there is something. I just didn't want to go to church every. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's a, a big point here. Like, a lot of people confuse spirituality and religion. Like, they're different yes. things. Yes. You know? like, two, like, yes, like, I believe in God as well, but to me, God is spirituality. Yeah. It's like the same, one and the same. And, and I guess the, there's a lot of differences, but, but I think in, in religion, right, you're encouraged to pray to something else to change your life. And that it's outside of your control, which, ah, this is contradictory. It sort of is, sort of isn't, but you're asking for something to be given and you're also made to believe that to get help, you need to go to external sources rather than within. Yes. And I think that, actually, I think that's probably the major difference for me. Like spirituality is learning to find the answers within and religion is is being told that you have to go to God to get the answers, which is again contradictory because, like God, in my opinion, is within. Yes. And without. And everything. But. For me, they they lost me when 
when I fully realized that the God they've been painting for me was a really nasty God. Yeah. Like, I had to go to church and pray and do these things and that thing and blah, 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 just to be, you know, in the end, um, go to heaven. Yeah. But, uh, I don't or think. Hell. I, or hell, yeah, either way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah, probably that's Lovely. why I changed my mind. Like, ah, yeah, you're I'm like, you know what? I'm out. <laughs> that's it. I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's when I when I decided that this is not working for me. But I still believe. I knew. I didn't believe it. I knew mm. that there's something else because I actually. I sort of had internal conversations with what I thought was God. Mm. Yeah. So because Which, the answers yes. that came to me. Part of God, so yeah, yeah it makes yeah. sense. It's not that I'm cuckoo or anything. Mm. Um, I do believe that every every single person, or every single being on the planet, um, universe, for that matter, um, has part God in them. Yeah, yeah and we all have a little spark of God. Yeah, or source, or whatever you want to call it, whatever name. And um, yeah, I, I was having conversations, and um, <clears throat> the answers that came. They seemed way too smart to came out of my head, so and That's made cool. too much sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, all right, there must be something there, and that, this is how I started to to get interested in spirituality mm. because I felt that there's something else, and I felt like I'm a, I need to search for whatever's out there. Mm. I need to know more. Yeah, because getting up in the morning, going to work, rah, going back home, eating. Sleeping, it's just not the life. And then getting no. wasted on the weekend mm-hmm. and then do it all again from my yeah. yeah. That's that's not the life. That's that's yeah, that's being slave. There's so much more to life. Yeah. So yeah. And you know, like on that note I'll just quickly diverge. Um I found that to be a really interesting place for me because as a young man I looked at things like meditation and spirituality and like spending a lot of time in silence and like being connected to the source or whatever as <laughs> like a waste of time or like I was like ah, I don't have time for that like I got shit to do like you know you get distracted you get busy and you're like ah, like I'm asleep you know that's enough of that like yeah. during this time I want to be active I want to be doing shit like however in the last few months since I've been doing this and meditating every day and like I, I find myself actively searching for excuses to do it more my life just feels, I think we chatted about this the other day when we caught up, we were talking about like the cyclical nature of life and the highs and the lows yeah. and how when you do practice meditation and more of like a mindful state in your life and a place of peace, those, it's like your average level, if your cycles, you know, going like this, your average is just sort of above, like on that higher sort of frequency and your, your peaks and troughs are just aren't so... And yeah, 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 excessive, and and so like <laughs> living from that place, I just feel. I, just, I don't even know how to explain it. I just I just feel so much better. I've always been a really high stress person, a really like swing high, swing low kind of person, and I just I'm really loving just feeling a little bit more leveled out. Yeah, well, that's I think that's what meditation does. Mm. To not just me or you, um, but everyone. That Calms people down. It, keep, yeah. it keeps their vibration at a more enjoyable rate. Yeah, yeah. vibe. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah, you, you don't you don't have those ups and downs as you said. You know? Yeah, or well, you do, but not to the same extent. Yeah, but I think you you sort of shake them off quicker. Yeah, yeah, so, that's also true. <clears throat> that's, that's also really true. Yeah. I've really noticed that the, the lows I reverse real quick from them. Yeah. For, for example, yesterday I, I had a. Bad day, not, not a very, good, not a very, very good day, and yeah. uh, I was really stressed. So, yeah, I decided to go to the beach and just sit there and for like literally half an hour in meditation, and it was the most amazing thing. Mm. I, I, I just tried to relax my my full body, and I realized that I was even tense in my fingertips. Mm. I couldn't believe it. I, I didn't even know that I could get tense in my fingertips. Mm. Afterwards, I was a completely different person. It's and that's why meditation to me is just yeah, I love it. Mm. And I I try to meditate as much as I can. I even try to meditate while I'm driving. 
So when I go out to work in the morning, I uh, put music on that sort of uh, yeah. There's there's no words in it, so I don't get yeah. distracted. It's yeah. just yeah. Do you do that um, the style Aubrey does, like the, the wide peripheral gaze meditation? I tried, right? I tried, but I get really tired. You know. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> the wing. So you sort of like what's what what do you? Is it like a mindfulness practice you do on the way to work? I just Sorry. focus on my breathing. Just, okay. Yeah, but I keep my eyes open, obviously. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, you're not playing like trance music or that. Like, uh, you know, like, no, so mm. <laughs> sometimes on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Usually on a Friday. <laughs> Some yeah. binaural beats. Get yeah, yourself yeah, into that. No, so. don't do that. Don't nah, do that. Yeah, that stuff nah. works. It well, works on me. Yeah, no, I would don't not do, do that while I'm driving. Uh-uh. Shit, no. Nah. I, um, I go to... At work, we have a, a massage room. That yeah, they actually ma- give us a massage once a month on that on, on work, which is really nice. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. um, so every day at lunchtime, I get half an hour lunch, and I go in there and my half an hour, and I put on my bone neural beats, and yeah. I just have a sleep, but just like a real light sleep, you know. So you're not, I'm not like abruptly waking up doing a sleep cycle or anything, yeah. but um, just have this like really nice nap, and I find with those bone neural beats, I drop in like that. Yeah, I'm saying. Really quick. Do the same thing at work. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a half an hour break in the morning and then lunch break. And my first break, I always hug and bake. Mm. And I put bone roll beats on and uh, I basically just zen out. Yeah, for 20 yeah. minutes. I'm cool. So nice. I come it? back fresh. Yeah, yeah you come back <laughs> real, real <laughs> great. Yeah. 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 It's been a game beats. changer for me. Yeah. Love it. Very, very good. Um, okay, so. So how did you get in, introduced to it? <laughs> to what? Oh, Spirituality. No, no, no. Okay, so you were saying like you've always sort of known. You've always had a, like a bit of a I was always drawn like to a, it. A, yeah. A draw, I, I've, yeah. Um, I've, I loved, always loved mysticism. So mm. anything that mm. was a little bit out there, mainly because, well, not mainly, but partially because I have red hair. And in Germany, there's not that many redheads. Yeah. And then, you know, you hear the stories about the Middle Ages, where they burned um, there. So I was like, oh, maybe I'm a witch. <laughs> so I got like, yes. <laughs> yes. Powers. Shit, yeah. Um, yeah. So, damn it, yeah, I'll wait. Try I'll try. I'll try yeah, yeah. Like, believe me, I tried. <laughs> I said there, but I always go, blame. <laughs> or at least something else. I, I love know. it. I love it. <laughs> I wait, tried. wait, wait. We can do this. Ready? Get your hand. Yeah. Get your hand. Get your hand up like this. Oh, you can't even oh, start sort of there. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, well, at least. Bucket list. The bucket, yeah, yeah totally, yeah. We'll figure that out. Yeah, ticked <laughs> up. Um, okay, so I was like, for you, it was kind of like an always belief and always vague knowing or feeling yes. of something. And then, um, yeah, one day a friend of my cousin, she was reading The Alchemist, Ron mm. Quetta, and. Um, she broke her leg and I went to visit her at the um, hospital. And uh, she gave me a book. She's like, I'm sure you're going to love this. Mm. And that's how it all started. That's right, started. so that book was kind of Yeah, your, it definitely was this book. Right, Absolutely. Okay. This book cool. got me on the path. Cool. Because that book got me to jump on the plane to Australia. Right, cool. And as soon as I got here, I met people that were spiritually inclined. Mm. And I met people there. I loved. And then I um, started reading a, a series of books called... Um, Conversations with God. Mm, my brother loves them as well. <laughs> All these books my brother loves. I've got to, I've got to read them. <laughs> yeah, no, def- definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely worth reading the whole the whole series. Um, yeah. Neil Don- Don Walsh, I love him as an author. He is, yeah, I mean, it wasn't just him. It was uh, Conversations with God. Mm. And I got attracted to it because I yeah, thought I had these conversations with God. Yeah, and, totally. Um, and, uh, yeah, I learned a lot from that, from that series of books. And... Uh, yeah, when then just started reading books, started meditating, and just sort of just like a sponge, just absorbed everything. Mm, just felt people. right. Just like, yeah, the, yeah, I, I yeah. do have to admit that <clears throat> I went down a path that was you know, a little bit weird for a while because I thought I had to look the part as well. So I got yeah. dreadlocks and a fisherman's pants. And <laughs> basically, I was living on the Gold Coast, but he could have put me into Byron Bay and it would have been like the perfect fit. Perfect fit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it was cool. It was it was good. Uh, it's an interesting thing that, that people just associate. Hey, like it's like yeah. spiritual <laughs> means you got to look like that, and like yeah, it just people think spiritual that immediately it's just like hippie. Yeah. You know, like it's strange. It's like 
It's, it's it strange. Fit into a category. That's the problem. Yeah, but it's funny because most of well, when I say most, I don't know them personally, but a lot of top level entrepreneur businessmen in the world, like you speak to the big guys, they're spiritual people. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. No one knows that. <laughs> yeah, right. Like back then, like, it was just the hippie. You don't think yeah. so? You think they're just laughing? Oh, yeah, what a way. yeah you think they're laughing at yeah. that, that? But no, you know, no, these no, guys no. are meditating. These guys are visualizing. You know, they know this stuff. Yeah, they're paying Tony Robbins a million bucks an hour. Yeah, <laughs> but it's exactly. a spirituality coaching, yeah. you know, like they really they recognize that, you know, <laughs> they say there's no magic pill in life. This is a magic fucking pill. Yeah. Except you know it's not a pill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know it's the ability that it has to impact their lives is well, second to none. Well, basically, it's that's what it is. Full stop. All it's, life is energy. Yeah. All life is. <clears throat> One thing I've come to realize, and that is that everything around us, to me personally, I mean, mm. everyone has their yeah. own. Yeah, this is ideas our. This is just it. us. Exactly. That's just me it's talking. Sharing out. I believe. Yeah. Um, that my bro- my world or my surroundings is basically representing of how I think. Yeah. 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 So and it's like a program that is running in the back of my mind or my body or whatever and my world is created through that so mm. whatever because two people can have can see the same picture but have two completely different experiences so mm-hmm. it's, it's all about us judging what is going on yeah so so to me everything that is happening is a representation of my beliefs and my my, my thoughts basically yeah. So, of, of your consciousness, yeah, of yeah. what's going on up here. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, you know, positive thinking is not just talk. It is... Yeah, totally, totally. It is actually... This stuff, it becomes like the in thing. You know, and everyone, and it becomes a hype and it becomes, yeah. a, you know, a fad or something. And, and everyone does it and... Yeah. Or jump, or does it, like, you know. It's all the rave. Everyone talks about it, but... With that, it's almost like the gravity of it gets lost to you. People sort of don't seem to grasp the fact that, or like how powerful it, it can be. It's almost just sort of taken for granted and then becomes forgotten. I think the problem is that people actually don't do it. Yeah. But the, they yeah. say that, oh, yeah, we need to be positive and it's yeah. all about the vibe and ah. Uh. Being positive in your life doesn't mean that you post a positive Instagram quote once a day and then exactly. you forget and move on. You know, like it's, <laughs> exactly. there's so much more yeah. to, to this. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, if having that positive vibe means that you actually change your vibration, change the way you think from the moment you wake up mm. to the time you go to bed. Mm. I mean, it won't always be perfect. It's no, no, 100%. Not. And it's not easy. I'm sure it's not. No. Um, um, well, no, yeah, I'm 100% sure it is. Yeah, like, it's uh, not easy. You know, like being, yeah. like being able to implement positivity in our lives means that in a shitty situation, we're able to then go within and find that silver lining yes. and then change our perspective. Yeah. That's hard. This is work. You know, like, but that's why it's fun, too. It's fun. It, it actually is fun. Is. That's the thing. It's like, a challenge. I, I get so happy every time. I catch myself thinking a bad thought or whatever, or you know, a negative thought, and I go, hey, hang on, hey, 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 stop mm. tight, come on, get out of here, yeah, change it, and then I change it, and I go, oh, well done, yeah, and I'm just doing totally. the well done for for the sake of changing it, not yeah. because you know it's a positive thought, it's the change, yeah, that is the important that's the power, yes. the shift is the absolutely. power, absolutely, hundred percent. When you can learn to change your perspective on something, and like, because a lot of us, and I've noticed this myself massively over the years are, are addicted to suffering so these feel you know in a unconsciously yeah so these feelings will come up and this and you just <laughs> you just get trapped in this victim or victim this place of a victim and it's almost like and this is for me okay i'll just speak for me i've no- noticed that when i feel that way as strange and, and contradictory as it might sound i don't want to escape it it's like i want to remain there because 
when I'm a victim and when things are happening to me, I can take responsibility off and just feel like this, like I'm suffering. That's not my fault. Okay. So when you have the power to be able to, you know, see an area where you are suffering and disassociate from the suffering, see it as a pain and just, and just switch that. Like that's, I mean, if you can do that and consistently, that's the key to happiness in life. Surely, or at least one of them. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, because it suddenly becomes a creator of how you feel and, and basically your life. Mm. And um, you start acting, not reacting. Yeah. Like you said earlier. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I totally agree. Mm. I totally agree. It's, it's, it's quite the... It's quite a journey. <laughs> so, yeah, it sure is. So for me, like, just to touch quickly, I... I was thinking about how I'm gonna how I'm gonna answer this because how did I get introduced to spirituality? Well, didn't ask you, did I? no, that's okay. But I'm just <laughs> I'm just thinking about like I was raised in a family where my mother was both my parents were pretty pretty in quotes enlightened to a degree. Um, my mother leading the charge, and she. Mum's like an author, teacher, speaker, coach kind of thing. Works a lot with um, personal development stuff. So she's she's very cluey and she's pretty spiritual. So I had that as an influence on my life from the beginning, which was cool. But I think for me the the introduction or the or the or when it hit me was like it just made so much sense. Not only on a an intuitive and in a knowing feeling, but also on a scientific basis, on both, you know, because, you know, if, if, sci- if it's true that everything is energy and everything is moving, everything's vibration, just particles whizzing around, that means that everything physical is, as w- and so are our brainwaves and our thoughts. So if everything is really made up of the same thing, how can thoughts not affect reality? Exactly. Like it doesn't make any sense that it couldn't. It's like, that's why, you know, there's all this talk of matching up vibrations, you know, when you're, when you align a vibration, then it can attract that thing into your life. And that just made, it just made sense. I just was like, yeah, makes sense. And for me, at a, there was a period of my life, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I imagine it would have been my late teens or early twenties. I was... I decided to sort of practice this a bit and, you know, go, go pretty hard on affirmations and try to visualize mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. And never, never meditating. I, I, I only ma- I've only managed to begin meditating really recently. I just could shut my mind up. <laughs> well, that's what I thought anyway. Um, I'm still in that category. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and when I did that, I, I noticed tangible results. I just noticed it. It was like, Chalk and cheese, straight away, things just started happening for me. Yeah. You know, things, just, things just kept aligning. And I remember being like, damn, <laughs> you know, there's something to this. And then after that, somehow, some way, I lost my path. And I don't really know how or why or what. I think it was maybe just getting caught up in being a young lad, partying with my mates and driving fast and doing young boy things and just getting caught up in that world and and the world of influence, you know, social media and looking at other people and what they have and getting caught up with the idea of physical things. And so I lost touch with that side and it's really only been you know, over the, well, this year, really, 2019, that I, that I have reconnected with it and, oh my God. <laughs> Did a good job. Feels so good. <laughs> Feels yeah. so good. I feel like I've come home. Yeah. It's a strange feeling. It's like inside me, all of a sudden I'm just like <sighs> Well, I went through something very similar because when my permanent residency didn't work out the way I wanted it to, um, I lost my path too. I was like, nah, this stuff doesn't work for me mm. and, uh, and um, yeah, I went pretty negative. It, it was almost like real life caught up with me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it was... R- real life. Yeah, in real quotes. life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because before that, I was doing my dream job. I was doing 
kung fu, mm. uh, which is it's, that particular kind of style or system. Um, it's very internal, so yeah. it was all about energy. Like my body was constantly relaxed, yeah, cool. and it was all about in my mind. You know, I would I was in my mind visualizing energy coming out of my hands or whatever. Is it kind of like Tai Chi? They call it the Tai Chi of Kung Fu. Yes, okay, so that's the yeah. There's a form to it, and it's actually very slow. Mm. <clears throat> um, it was basically Bruce Lee's first martial art. Oh, okay, yes, cool. It's, uh, Right. Um, well, yeah. um, but yeah, after after that, suddenly I had to work physically, you know, you know, building houses and uh, building timber and cutting and lifting. And there was no relaxation anymore. And Even, being around a certain type yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to go there, but yeah. Yeah. Well, you can. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I've worked in it's trades a, as yeah, well. It's it's, just, it's hard. I still am working yeah, in yeah, trade. Yeah. So, but and sometimes. Before I get home, before I walk inside, I need to sit in my car and just go six deep breaths. Mm. Yeah, before going there. But then, yeah, I open the door and there's my dog and he's like, Wah! coming up to me straight away, egg and tail. Yeah. And I was like, no, okay, I'm home. I'm good now. Good. I'm good now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, my home is my sanctuary. So, yeah. You know, I walk in there and I'm good. Yeah. Sometimes I need to talk about work or whatever, or, you know, about my day. Um, but yeah, I've got a lovely lady at home. She, she really loves me. So, uh, She's also very spiritual and very fluid on. Yeah, that's <coughs> like, that's such a blessing, man. Oh yeah, when oh, you have sure. a partner who's like on doing the work with you and yes. on that path. She you. even gives workshops and that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm very lucky there. That's yeah. right. I'm I'm gonna have to have her on one day. Yeah, so that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah, so, sorry. Were you gonna say something? Go on, man. Yeah. It's okay. Um. So, in terms of practices and our experiences with in on like a spiritual path and I want to I want to try and make this as clear to people as possible and, and so like for the for the beginners and for people that sort of aren't so in touch so in touch with this side of us um you know like like let's try and delve into this a little bit more like why and how I think I think a lot of people there's two types of people right there's generally there's people that need proof need things to be shown to them like this is how it is and then there's people that are that just have a knowing like you do like I feel like I probably do um, not feel like I probably do like I do I've always been a very in, intuitive person, just instinctual. I, I, I like that. I feel, I like to feel my way through life. I don't yeah, listen to someone just be like, let's use the, let's use doctors as an example because it's an area that I'm quite passionate about. I don't believe in a lot of shit that doctors tell me. Um, you know, so when it comes to health, that's an important thing for me. And I believe that intuitively my body knows the knows the answer it knows what i need to do um so i've always listened to that personally this is not advice this is my personal experience um so there's those two sides and for those that do need the proof and that you know that tangible sort of thing like what would you say to them like, like, because to me there's all the evidence in the world for spirituality within science and within the top performers of the world. There's documentaries, there's YouTube videos, there's books. There, I mean, this, this thing is literally everywhere. It's all around us. What would you say to like someone who's sort of just a bit like, it thinks it's woo-woo? I would say, <clears throat> go and buy a book by Dr. Bruce Minton. Ah, uh, The Biology of Belief? Yes, yes. for example, Great that's just book. one. Uh, yeah. Then there's, there's other people that used to be scientists, they're still scientists, um, but they have proven that mm. all of this can be proven scientifically. Yeah. So you know, it's it, it's out there. You just gotta you just gotta have to look for it. Just gotta do a bit of digging. Yeah. To me, okay, actually, this is a good one. To me, the biggest proof in because like the power of the mind, right? The power of the mind, spirituality, soul. 
God, Source. This is all related. It's all like one and the same in a sense, right? To me, one of the biggest sources of proof that we have available to us on this earth is the placebo effect. It's yeah. like, it's, it has to be implemented in all studies, in all, all like legitimate scientific studies, right? They have to implement it because it's just known, acknowledged worldwide that it is legit. The placebo and the nocebo are, are a legitimate effect. Yeah. There are people who have been given, um, what was the story? They've been given an injection that was just saline and told it was a cure for cancer and they cured, they healed themselves and then they were told that it was just an injection of saline and they died. Oh, and really? came back. Okay. And they died. And that, like, literally, it went away. Then they were told that it was bullshit and they believed that and came back. Like, examples like that are flooded throughout science and throughout, you know, the, the, the health system, all sorts of different things. Yeah. There's enough evidence. For me, there's so much evidence. Like for me, if there is, if it's known and accepted period around the world that our mind has the ability to affect our body and our environment like that, what more proof do you need? That's exactly right. I yeah. mean, if you, if you look at studies or um, that show that if a group of people meditates for peace, that area suddenly has yes. you know, less crime, less, you know, thefts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then once the meditation stops, like not just the oral meditations, you know. Yeah, the practice of it stops. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the exact time frame that this was in, but then suddenly all the crime goes back up. Mm. I mean, that's number one. That shows me that our thoughts and meditation and our intention, mm. intent, that is yes. important. intent. Tent um, changes the field around us. Yeah, and yeah. that's what it is. We are basically swimming in the matrix. We're light beings. Yeah. En yeah. Energy. Yeah. 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 We're just projecting out there what we believe is happening mm. as a you know collective consciousness. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that word up or that that saying up because I was talking to Phoebe, you know, one of the chicks that do a few podcasts with. Yeah. Um, at work today about collective consciousness and the power of this because this is like if there is one force out there on earth that has the ability to um, you know fix some of the, the, the most significant issues that we're facing in today's world whether it's environmental or hunger or poverty like whatever it's collective consciousness yeah, like sure. we have grown up in a society where the media is just fucking impregnating us with with negativity on a daily basis, morning and night, yeah. through social media, through <clears throat> radio set, through everything. It's bad, 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 bad. Negative, negative, negative. And you notice it immediately, like, so I'm calling you out, Dad. Dad watches the news, <laughs> you know, every day, every day. And it's obvious in his mind frame now, like, and it's really disappointing because I just I feel like grabbing him and going, Dad, like it's change the change starts here. It has to start here. If we all start focusing and believing on what can be better, not how bad it is, like that's the first step. And that's a massive step. Yeah, there's there's a reason why I don't watch um, news no. or TV. Or I don't no. listen to the radio or Spotify. Woo! Yeah, all the yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> um, the podcast app. Well, yeah, all that, all that. Um, yeah. And yeah, I try to avoid reading newspapers. Um, mm. Some people tell me I'm ignorant, but in the end, they're how, ignorant. How how, how how does it change my world? <laughs> exactly. Okay, if, if something happened, like you know, what happened in New Zealand very recently? Yes, it got to me. Yeah, I've been mm. told about it. Obviously, mm. it's everywhere. Yeah, people talk about it, so I got to know about it. I even got shown the, the video which was oh, uh, wasn't I heard well, about that's it. that's that's the proof that video games 
really uh, fucked up people. That's mm. that was my personal proof because that was set up like a video game. The whole yeah. video looked like a video game to me. Yeah, that that's could have been a problem. I haven't seen it, but but everyone I know mm. that's seen it has like it was literally like watching a video game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I I try to keep this negativity out of my out of mind, out of my consciousness. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because. I want to be the best person I can be. Absolutely. I, right. I, I truly believe in karma. Karma mm. only means action, really. But it's the action I'm putting out there that will come back to me. Yes. So I'm trying to stay as positive as, as I can. And I try to be good where I can. Yeah. Mm. And um, yeah, that if I get into this negative mind frame, I can see where other people suddenly they you know start triple locking their houses or you know like everyone's in fear yeah and and, and yeah if you're constantly in fear how can you enjoy life a collective consciousness of fear <laughs> is never going to bring about you know no, peace not. and love and no. happiness and joy no. it's just going to bring about danger and you know absolutely violence and anger violence. And i think violence that's mm. the that's the worst the mm. worst thing that can can come out of fear because mm. yeah people fear like it invites it in yeah. Like fear opens the door for this stuff. Yeah. Like, mm. I believe racism mm. is based on fear. Yeah. The fear of the unknown. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, totally. this person is a different color to me. Oh my God. Oh my yeah. God. I'm kind of afraid. Oh, I don't like you. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Sexism. Same don't, thing. Yeah. We, as men, don't know what it's like to be a woman. It's like, and vice and versa. Some of us are afraid of them. And <laughs> fucking like, oh, I am. <laughs> so much power over me. Yeah, totally. Suddenly I'm. Uh, How, wait, it's like you come out of a trance <laughs> after. You're like, "How did you do that to me? How did you make me do that?" Yes. Or, you know, like it's it's the fear of the un- yeah, yeah, what we don't understand, yeah. what we don't know. Exactly. Totally, one hundred. It's dangerous. And I mean, that's 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 a podcast on its own. Fear. Yeah. But um, <laughs> not with me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do another one on that. I love. Wait. I love fear. No, I don't love fear. I love the topic of fear. I okay. really do. It's something I'm really connecting with lately, and I'm wanting. I want to write a blog on it. And I'm actually, I've actually got a poem in the works. So I'm writing that. So that nice. is, like, it's just something that I've lived a lot of my life out in fear, I, and as I think a lot of us have, but really noticed it looking back, and really ready to put my foot down now and just go no, no more. Feel fear and do it anyway. Feel fear and do it anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm sitting here right now. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's this great quote that I used to love as a kid. I had it on my wall when I was a teenager. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but I think it's something like, um, what if I told you all of your greatest um, hopes and dreams were on the other side of your greatest fears? What would you do? Would you still go there or something like that? I don't know, but it really resonated with me. I just really loved it. I was like, hmm. And then I got, you know, this um, tattoo that that um, is like roughly translated into no pain, no gain. You know, because I'm a huge believer that like if you're not prepared to go through the shit, you're not going to get the, you know, the benefits out of the side. Like, it's balance. You know, you've got to go. You've got to be prepared to face your fears to, to, you know, what is, what is that? Um, to re- reap the rewards. It is warm. Um, Okay, so, so back to like uh, practices, experiences in terms of spirituality and, yeah. you know, what, what we do to remain in that space um, and, and also let's talk a little bit about like sort of what we do and, and then what we want to do, you know, and what, we're, what we are drawn to and things like that as well and um, so on and so forth. So... What do you like? What do you do? What are your habits? What are you? What's your routine? What to you enables you to stay in that place of, um, you know, of, of peace and self and. You know. So I think what comes to mind first is looking after my body. Yeah, that is has been a big thing for me for a long, long time, and I used to be a smoker. Uh, I used to drink loads of alcohol. Like weekends for me was usually a big Friday. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it started, yeah, usually on Thursday night already. Um, but yeah, I realized that I have only one body, and I need to take care of it. Yeah. And I've decided, and it, it was a decision. And this is what it's all about. It's about deciding 
what you want and how you want to feel. Mm. And by saying, okay, I want to feel good in here, I need to feed it, feel yeah. good. Yeah. So, you know, microwave stuff and um, all of this, like McDonald's, and I haven't touched McDonald's. Oh, sorry. I did drink coffee there. But uh, <laughs> that's the only thing, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, still, it's good coffee, actually. Not too bad. Um, yeah, I haven't touched my dons in literally like, you know, three minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, yeah. and um, I'm quite proud of that. Mm. Like, yeah. I, I walk into it just because I've just bagged my McDonald's. I've bagged KFC as well. Now. Yeah, do I, it. I walk let's, into it. Let's rack on them all. <laughs> <laughs> I walk into a KFC and I literally need to walk out. I've tried yeah. to eat it twice because I've been told it's good. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I you, smell yeah. the <laughs> The oil, or whatever they're using, I don't know what it is, but there's something in there that goes, nah, I just can't do it. I can't yeah. put that in my body. Yeah. And um, like, yeah, I, I, I really it's tried. It's to poison, mate. Like, it's, yeah, it's definitely, poison. Definitely. <laughs> it's it's definitely not the best food. I'm not entirely sure about poison. I don't want to go down. <laughs> okay, let's not get into that <laughs> argument. <laughs> yeah. It's a camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> nah, but um, yeah, it's. Oh, you're yeah, right. Don't sue me. <laughs> <laughs> So, and the other thing is exercise. So, mm. you know, proper nutrition, exercise, that already is, and it's not over-exercising, very important, very important, mm. because I've been down that path too, where I trained like five days a week, tried to go as big as I can, and that was when I was doing CrossFit, mm. and I enjoyed it, don't get me wrong, but um, I think people need to have that balance that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Because you need to have downtime too. Yeah. Because that's when we grow. It's yeah, well, exactly right. Like on the on a on a physical level, like you know, if you don't have that downtime, that rest, that's when the muscles are repairing, that's where your muscles are growing. Exactly. But, but also, um, just you know your best result I I feel your best results come physically when you have a love and respect for the body that you're in. Yes. And when you do, you don't you, you recognize that you don't need to slay yourself seven, yeah. five to six, seven days a week yeah. to get those results. Um, and, and what you say there is so important. You know, like, that's a, it's a really good point. Spirituality, you know, is holistic. Yeah. You know, it's, it's mind, body, spirit. You know, and that physical part of it is just as important. It's like, yes, this body is, it's how we experience this experience. You know, it's, it's what, you know, this meat suit is what we are in. It's the vessel that we have. Yes. Right? And it's I'll the only vessel. Much better. Vessel, yeah, <laughs> yes. than meat suit. <laughs> meat suit is a little bit, eh. Okay. The vessel, yeah, it's, yes. a, nice, it's, it's yeah. a great vessel. And it, it has the potential to improve our experience here. Or, or like, not to, to, to like heighten our experience here drastically. Yeah. Like, we, this body has incredible potential. Absolutely incredible potential what we can achieve which we've all seen because everyone's seen the um what is it what's the what are those crazy viral youtube videos the amazing humans they do them like every year oh don't tell me you haven't no, seen no. them <laughs> i probably have <laughs> they're awesome it's just like highlight reels of amazing things that people do with their bodies yeah. and in sports and all this i stuff. think i've seen every yeah for sure but um you know like there's extremes but to to be able to function just every day without pain or discomfort yeah. to be able to you know, walk and run without blowing after 50 meters. Yeah. You know, like that in itself improves the life, life experience here a hundredfold, surely. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why, I, again, it comes back to balance. Mm. <clears throat> I've started yoga um, just for the, the stretching part. I, I'm, I, sometimes I just on the floor at home and just feel what my body wants to do. Yeah. Yeah, so I just start stretching in pretty weird ways where, mm. you know, I, I didn't think it up. It just sort of, like, okay, do you want to go this way, that way? And I just feel my body and I flow with my body. But, you know, just having a yoga practice really, really helps. Mm. Just training, it, it's, it's not good for the joints. It's not, you know, I hurt my back doing CrossFit because... Yeah. I just overdid it full stop there was no one's fault other than mine mm -hmm. there's no it's not crossfit that i can blame or you know 
to heavy yeah, weights totally or whatever, cool. it was definitely yeah, it was this way. Yeah. It was my um, ego. It, my ego just wanted to go 100%. heavy and hard and, you know, as hard as possible. I mean, yeah. Well, I can do this, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I... <laughs> Hey, I, I, I did bodybuilding, like, and this is just to, to so you no, know, drive, really? drive that no. home about, <laughs> about um, yeah, I know I'm a little weird now, <laughs> about, um, cr- like, CrossFit, and, and, like, it's not the sport's fault, it's it's us, it is yeah. ego, like, yeah, it's definitely I was I did bodybuilding, and I tore my, I tore my glute, Oof. doing a squat, mm-hmm. just squatting too much for myself, and I tore, mm-hmm. and I tore my um, labrum in my shoulder, mm-hmm. lift, doing side raises, just, like, basic side raises, it's just, it's just ego, like, it's just... Mm-hmm. Overuse and abuse. Overuse. And abuse, exactly right. So, you know, shit happens, you learn from these things and, and you just move on. But, yeah, like, exercise doesn't have to be slaying yourself. If you're not a professional athlete, like, and you're not chasing gold at the Olympics or whatever it is, like, just, yeah, you can chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, just, just, just exercise, just move. Like, this body is made to move and it's made to service us in that, to that degree. Yeah. To serve us, sorry, exactly. in that degree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you... If you overdo it and you get you know sick because of it or injured, mm-hmm. you can't serve other people. Yeah. So you're not working for the collective. Then you're no longer fit for service. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. So okay, so okay, so physicality that yeah. was one, that's one of them. The other thing is, um, yeah, again, meditation. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I occasionally do is uh, vipassana meditation, and mm. then I heard. That you are going to do that too? Yeah, I'm shitting myself. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm really excited, but I'm also I, I know that I have I I have the like ability to, to put myself in a very uncomfortable in, in a really uncomfortable to do the work. Let's just put it that way. So I know what's coming for me. I know it's gonna be a, a slog. Like it, it really will. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna find a lot inside. And there's going to be a lot of work to do around it, but I'm keen. I'm excited. Yeah, just so for those know. that don't know, <laughs> yeah. what's Vipassana? <laughs> Vipassana is a 10-day meditation retreat. Um, silent meditation retreat. So you are not allowed to speak. You um, can't make any eye contact with anyone. Um, you basically put yourself for 10 days. Mm. Um, you go within. within. Yes. And um, you get given exercises to do. Um, and it's every day. I think it's every day. <clears throat> to basically teach you how to meditate and um, teach you to concentrate and uh, yeah, get in tune with your body, really. And it's funny the things that come up. I can only <laughs> imagine. <laughs> yes. Your body, your body is going to... Um, I mean, I don't want to tell you what will I, I what it feel yeah. will feel like to you? Be, I can only tell you how it felt like to me. But yeah, you, know, you get tingling sensations everywhere, mm-hmm. and um, you know you get told to focus on it, and they move. Yes. Fucking move! <laughs> Hang on, why, oh. why is this moving? Why is it trying to trying to distract me from something? Because that's what it is. They're trying to distract. Yeah. Your body and your mind going, hang on, I'm not, I don't want to be here right now, so let's do something. We need to scratch. No. Yeah. Oh, God, I get that every morning. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, do, I do like generally 20 minutes every morning. I'll do sometimes, it'll be, depending on how rushed my morning routine is, it'll be like 15 to 30 minutes is my sort of meditation window every morning. And I find that like the slightest thing, like being outside and air cools my foot. Man, you've never felt an ant crawl on your foot until you're trying to meditate and an ant crawls on your foot. And you're like, in your head, all you can think about is like, fucking ant, get off my foot. Really? So, or no. Not in all, like, it bothers me a lot more than, it, but it did originally anyway. And yeah. it's taken me a long time to, to start to sort of detach. And you'll get like itches, or yeah, yeah. like you're saying, or a, like something will happen that's and you'll, you'll want to move, you'll want to scrap. Yeah, like there'll be... Your mind's constantly throwing things at you. It'll try with thoughts, and then if thoughts don't distract you, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't need you. You know, like, then something else physical will happen, or like, yeah. there's, there's always something. Yeah. And I listened to a brilliant podcast. I don't know if you've listened to Aubrey's most recent podcast yet, with Shin Zhang Young. Yes, I have. Yeah, the month. Yeah. Didn't like it? No, okay. Mm-hmm. I actually really enjoyed it, because 
I love the message of detached, like separating pain and suffering. Yeah. Like I, I really relate with that and relate with that. It's actually the method that I use when I get tattooed. Okay. I really focus on um, acknowledging the pain but not suffering from it. So for those that That's don't, like a weird idea, but that's strange. Yeah. Idea. yeah. Because then I got my tattoo, so like I kind of enjoy the first ten minutes when it still hurts. Yeah. And then I go in numb mode. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I just detach myself from it. Yeah. So. Yeah, you like you just allow you you know the pain's there and you you, you recognize and accept it as yeah. being there, but you don't attach suffering to it. Yeah. 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 Um. It's easier done with the tattoo because you know there's got to be something good afterwards. Yeah, like, exactly. Ah, yeah. yeah, you're like, yes. I know it's good. So, like, yeah, yes. yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is, that is easier. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I just love that message. Like that, that, because that's something that I really do try. I try to implement in life. Um, however, so, so meditation. So for you, how um, you meditate every day? No, not every day. Not every day. No, sometimes I. Um, But I try to. Mm. I try to meditate every day. Um, yeah. I actually want to get back into it, to be honest, because it, I do feel a lot better when I yeah. meditate every day. Yeah. So, yeah. Just got to get back up into my morning routine, basically. Mm. Get up 20 minutes early. Yeah. That's yeah. all it is. <laughs> well, so, you were saying that you do um, your little vinyl beats, sort of. Yeah, sort on, of yeah on the way. Zen yeah. on the way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, on the way and then at work, like in your little break sometimes. Oh, yeah, well. yeah. So like you sort of probably have your mo- your mindfulness sort of state throughout the day most yeah. days, eh? Well, the binaural beats, I, I literally just fall asleep. Yeah. So yeah, that to yeah. me is not meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I would say that's a meditation, I would lie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that's, yeah. No, that's For me, it, it takes me on a journey when I, when I listen to them. It doesn't really put me to sleep. It puts me in a, a light sleep state, yeah. Yeah. but then it takes me on a trip. That's crazy. Oh, right. Like I've had visions. I actually did have a vision today from it, which was really cool. Um, we'll get into that shortly because I want to touch quickly on the on the plants as well in a moment. Um, okay. This podcast is going to go a little bit longer, guys. I'm sorry, but I love this conversation, so we're just going to roll with it. Um, if you've got time, yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. So, so for me, like you know, in terms of spirituality and. Um, maintaining the flow, the flow state or the being in touch, it's very much my, it's meditation, training, eating well, so make, make sure that I'm putting the right food in my body and um, reading. I find reading in itself a, a form of meditation. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like taking your attention, which is normally like this, and you know, narrowing it and focusing it. And yeah. I think that's very much kind of a state of meditating to, you know. There's so many different forms of meditation from what I, you know, oh, yeah. I believe. Um, and for those that are interested in meditation or getting started on that on that path, the way that I started, because I really struggled with the idea of shutting up my head and, <clears throat> and being able to drop in, what was forcing myself to read again and read quality, like not reading fiction, like reading good quality personal development and spirituality sort of stuff. Um, and I just, I literally just sat down every morning and forced myself to read for 15 minutes. So it was only 15 minutes. I, I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, there's a lot of resistance here at the moment. So I'm just going to have to set really attainable goals. Um, so I just made myself do that. I think I probably did that for about a month before I, well, it might have even been two months before I decided to do meditation and go because I was starting to really enjoy it. I noticed myself and some mornings I'd do like half an hour reading. I'd be like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's been great. So I started I started with five minutes a day of meditation. That was it. And I think it only took me about five, four or five days to be like, okay, I'm going to bump it up to 10 because I'm feeling pretty comfortable with five. And then, yeah, and then it's just been a progression from there. Like 10 minute meditation is really pretty easy. Do like yeah. you, you sit down and close your eyes and just focus on your breathing for a little bit, and you'll find 10 minutes will go like that. Yeah, I agree. And um, so that's been like this might sound like a, like dramatic, but meditation feels like it's been a lifesaver for me, mm. it really does. I, yeah. I just feel like the best way of describing it is <sighs> <laughs> that's like the best way of describing it that I've got. Yeah. Like, it's just a relaxation and a peace within me now. And like you were saying before, 
it's the ability to turn around the negatives so much quicker. Yes. Um, and for, for if, if there's people that have really big problems with quieting down the mind, I would suggest guided meditations. Yeah. They are really, really helpful. Yeah. So like sometimes I go Absolutely. back to guided meditations um, and I like listening to meditation music as well. Yeah. It does help me calming my mind down. Yeah. yeah um, unless I'm sitting on the beach then I don't want anything in my ears. I just want to listen to yeah, the sound waves. Yeah. yeah. Smell and just want to be fully right there, present in that environment. Exactly. Yeah. But um, other than that, definitely guided yeah. meditation. I agree. I still use them for most of my mornings because I just, I, I just like it because I like the message and yeah. it does help me focus and um, and so on. So yeah, hundred percent. I'd agree. And and I think personally, from my experience, ones that are really good for beginners, um, Wayne Dyer's. I really like Wayne yeah. Dyer's stuff. They're yes. really good for beginners. Um, he's got some awesome stuff and. <clears throat> I'm now doing a lot of Muji. Oh yeah, I love Muji. He's such <laughs> yeah. a cool guy. Yeah, and uh, I got really a nice message. And his his guided meditations also a little bit um, a little bit less intrusive in your in your space. Yeah, that's true. Which I really enjoy now because now that I'm better at focusing, I can sort of just and then there's little reminders from him from time to time. That and on, on Spotify, I think it's in the podcast section actually. Um, there's Hay Holes. Yes, they have, they have uh, meditations there. That's where I sometimes pick my out of yeah I do. so there's people like Dr. Joe Dispenza oh, yeah. uh, he's got a meditation in there that I love straight away downloaded that one yeah Dr. Yeah, Wayne Dyer nice. um, Louise L. Hay mm. you know all, all the, the big, big names, big names. In, in the game yeah I've um, done I've been doing the Louise Hayes morning one a couple of times lately it's pretty oh, good I, I really, good. Like, I really yeah. like the meditation yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah she's good man she's pretty shit oh, there's so many cool resources out there yes um <laughs> Yeah, like, and you'll find that you'll really, like, you'll really enjoy it. Like, I think you'll really enjoy it, guys. Like, this is, it's like a challenge and it's a whole new world to explore. Yeah. And there's so many different types from on meditations to R meditations to guided meditations yeah. to <laughs> silence meditations. To picture meditations, yeah. Picture meditations, yeah, like, there's heaps of different types. Um, and what was I going to say that, that just left me like that? <laughs> Um, save me, save me. <laughs> I, can't I did not pick it up, sorry. <laughs> it's no. in the, it's the sky, like, yeah. nah, are you looking? Nah, it slipped, it slipped through the cracks. Um, okay, so in terms of, oh, actually, floating. 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 You, have you done a float tank yet? No, still oh, not. Okay, so that's one that you haven't tried. So no. I had a float tank experience, so also known as sensory deprivation tank. Um, experience recently with a mate of mine who's also very much on this path, path and who I'm also really keen to get on the podcast because he's legend has a dope story shout out to Rich Freezer Bird he's, <laughs> he's, he's a cool a, guy he's a cool guy <laughs> um, so that in itself was the single most therapeutic experience I've had oh I'm talking about breathing too okay and <laughs> Yeah, shit. Oh my god, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> this is going to be a long podcast. Um, no, we won't go too much on the try. Um, and that, like, honestly, that was. I, I really don't know how to explain floating. It's generally an hour in a, in a coffin. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. A tank filled with some water that's got like something like four thousand pounds of magnesium or salt, bath salts or something oh, um, okay. absorbed into it. So it's super buoyant. It's kind of like in so like the Dead relaxing. Sea. So it's super relaxed. Yeah, yeah. like you come okay. out of it feeling like your whole body just feels like you've just had a and two hour deep tissue massage and it's like you know like definitely need to do that. It's epic. And actually, coming out of it, I I. I said to myself when I was sitting in the, in, they've got like a really nice relaxation room that you sit mm -hmm. in afterwards just to sort of reintegrate. And I was sitting there and I just remember thinking to myself, fuck massages. Whenever I'm feeling tight and twisted again, I'm just yeah. going to come back and do this. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just yeah. felt so good. Um, and the, the state of peace that I was in after it, man, when you climb out of that thing, I did, I think we were in there for about an hour and a half other than now, but by the way, when you, it's like it 
feels like being reborn. Wow. You're in this space, right, that's completely pitch black. You cannot see. There's nothing to hear. They play some relaxing music at the beginning when you're getting in, and then I think for like the first five minutes of your float, there's some relaxing music, and then it just fades out. And there's no, so no, no light, no sound. You're in water that is um, maintained at body temperature, so you can't feel it. What I, what I actually found, which was really interesting, is you don't feel the water, but you feel the air on the part of you that's out of the water. Oh, okay. Because there's a, they, because obviously they have to have like an air circulation so that you don't suffocate, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> um, there is like a, just a real slight draft, yeah, draft breeze. I don't really, I don't want to use those words because they, they feel like too much movement of air, yeah, but like, yeah. you know, you just, you can just sense the air on your skin. Um, but aside from that, you really are deprived of your senses. It's very much. Like you're back you, in the room. Yeah, it, it so is. It, you, I was going to say, you're, you're kind of forced to go within because there isn't anything out left mm-hmm. to, to, to feel, to react to, to, to think about. There's nothing to think about. You're lying there. You can't feel anything. There's nothing that's going to irritate your body because you're just in relaxing bar salts yeah. and there's no light or sound or anything. And so you have no place to go other than within. Yeah. And for me, like, that was just... Like, it just, it just opened a door, you know? And I was like, ooh, I can go exploring. Yeah, right. And an hour and a half, it was just like, bang, gone. I remember the alarm going off, and I was like, already? I was gutted. I was like, oh, I would have been here for this way longer. And where did you do that again? I did it at a place called Float Life. I can't remember the suburb it's in. I always forget this, the suburbs out that way, out the northwest Gold Coast somewhere mm-hmm. no, okay. not that but I don't know just look up it's float.life on Instagram and they're awesome I really can't recommend it actually it was a beautiful experience as a, for a float centre um, oh, I feel shit I can't remember the owner's name <laughs> but he was he was also a lovely guy and the environment that he set up there was really really nice it was really nice so I, re- I definitely recommend it um, it was funny actually we walked in the door me and Rich we walked in and he looked at us and he was like Joe Rogan <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were like Aubrey Marcus yeah. and he's like oh he's like I get about 80% of my clients are Joe Rogan referrals I was that like cool. wow that talk about cool. power yeah, he talks about it all the time he does yeah and he's got his own yeah yeah. but he goes into the stone yeah that's right he does that must be even imagine that Ooh. yeah keen to try that one day <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so so that was the main experience and then um, moving on to the only, I think the only other technique that I've really used. I mean, I, like I consider training to be meditation as well. Like yep. that's a way of getting in the zone, so, right? So that's certainly been a, a, a consistent throughout yep. my life. But um, I guess the only other like really intentional method I've used was um, bre- uh, a, I did a breath works class, which is like. Uh, Therapeutic breathing, I suppose. And for those that haven't heard of this, it's ridiculous how powerful breath is. Like, really incredible how how much of, a, of an effect it can have on mm-hmm. our body. Like, amazing. I um, and I've done a bit of like a, a bit of experimenting with Wim Hof as well. Like he's um little breathing um, exercise, that which is really cool because you can hold your breath so long if you just oxygenate, oxygenate your blood. Like, yeah, it's amazing. I, 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 the first time I did it and I was doing a breath hold, I lay there holding my breath and I didn't trust myself. I was like, I'm going to really check myself. So I put my hands up like over my nose and over my mouth so I couldn't breathe. Yeah. And I remember laughing. I was like, <laughs> I was laughing because I just didn't need to breathe. Yeah. And I've always associated myself as someone who cannot hold his breath to save his life. Mm. Like if you told me to just hold my breath randomly, I'd go like 20 seconds. Mm. Suck the funny it. thing is too, that um, if you do push-ups before the breathing exercises, let's say you did 20, mm. um, afterwards, while holding your breath, you can do yeah. like at least 10 or 20 more. Yeah, he talks about that. Yeah. Hey, he's I've like, s- you've I've seen the video it. of it. And it's yeah. Like, how does that even work? How That's does that right. even make sense? I haven't tried that yet. 
I haven't tried it. Yeah, I guess. Well, I guess if you if you highly oxygenate your blood, yes, yeah. that's muscular endurance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you can yeah, make, yeah, 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 it makes sense. There's a simple. Yeah, there's always a scientific answer, yeah. and the science behind Wim Hof stuff's amazing. Yeah, like amazing. Like he's breaking records everywhere, and 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 then he's proving things in science that scientists thought were impossible, just not, not doable. Like you know. You're literally changing the chemistry of your body through like while you're breathing. It's amazing. Anyway, back to my experience. So I did this breathing workshop, and it was about an hour and a half or something of lying on your on my back with I think just a pillow, and it was breathing deep breath in, and then just relaxing, letting it straight back out, and then immediately breathing back in, no rest between. So I was like. Yeah, so it's like long in, <laughs> let go, and then breathe again. Go, and it was like an hour and twenty. It's, it's a workout. It's hard. Your body just want your body's just crying out to stop. And she'll be walk, she's walking around the facilitator. Shout out to Philippa, you're amazing. Um, <laughs> she'll be walking around the room. And she'll be like, keep going, keep it, just just like, you know, encouraging you. And I reached a place. You know, you start to get t- the tingles. Yeah. You get like really highly oxygenated and. Your body starts tingling, and that intensifies and intensifies. And, and if you go past that, and you know, at that point, Wim Hof is generally saying, "Look back off," because I'm just about reoxygen, like oxygenating your body. You're not, you're sort of pushing past that. That's sort of generally referred to as shamanic breathing. I think yeah, maybe push past that. Say, yeah. um, and I just kept pushing. And what happens is there's a name for it. I think it's like tinnitus or something. Is it? Tinnitus is a ringing in your ears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a name for it. And basically, uh, your 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 hands curl up, and um and your toes start to crunch up as well, mm. and you you're paralyzed. You you really? literally become paralyzed. So I'm lying there on the ground, and and I'm like Ooh. all my muscles are clenching, and I'm like feel like I'm just like an alien <laughs> curling up and I'm paralyzed and I just remember all I could do was breathe. There was nothing else I could do. I couldn't move anything yeah. except breathe. And I'm in this position and I'm freaking the fuck out. Like I haven't had an experience anything like that before and I, and I wasn't told this might happen. So I was kind of worried. I was yeah. like, fuck it, what's happened? And um, it was the first time. <laughs> I breathed too much. I'm high as yeah. fuck on breath. And it was the first time in my life I've ever had a kind of out of body experience where I looked oh, wow. down on my body yeah. and saw this curled up fucking thing on the ground that was just like. <sighs> <sighs> and I'm like, what in the fuck is happening? And I just remember looking down, seeing that, and then something in my head was like, pull the plug. It was just like, pull the plug. And I, and I just remember just trying to, just doing everything I could to just stop breathing. And, get come out of it because it scared the shit out of me like oh, yeah. I finished that and things started to come back and I just remember sitting up and just fucking crying and just like bawling and, and fucking you know Philip came over and gave me a hug and just like held me for a while because I just had to let it out I just felt so shaken up but the experience of that and what I discovered that I could achieve just through breathing was really amazing for me and and I haven't, I've never experimented with um, with much in the way of drugs or, or anything like that or, or, or had like, you know, out-of-body experiences or psychedelics or any of that. And so for me, like, it unlocked something in my mind that was like, oh, wow, there is definitely something more to me than just this vessel. Yeah. We like that word. <laughs> Temple. <laughs> Temple, yeah. So, on that note, you know, discovering Aubrey and, and reading Aubrey's book and listening to his podcasts, I have listened to every single one. <laughs> I'm just going to say 196 of them. Holy I'm a fan. Some of them multiple times. And, you know, he's a, a huge believer and advocate of plant medicine yeah psychedelics as medicines um in particular uh, ayahuasca and wachuma and iboga and some of these 
traditional medicines that have been used for thousands and thousands of years in their places of origin around the world. And so for me, you know, being on this spiritual journey, on this path, I have just been drawn. I feel it's like a magnet. I just feel pulled to, to go down this path now because of, because I unlocked that door in my, in my brain. That's this just like, I now know there's so much more to be, to experience and be found and find out and learn about myself and about this, this whole experience that we're having here. And so I haven't yet been down that path, but I am really, really keen to do so. And you have had a couple of experiences in that realm. Yes. So I thought maybe you could sort of share some of your findings. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so first one, which I used to do a lot, and um, I'm just going to go for that one first because mm. that's the most common one. A lot of people know about it. Um, I think, in my opinion, a lot of people abuse it, mm. and that's why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and that is marijuana. Yeah. Um, I used to, I used to smoke it a lot, abused it, and it, it, it's not good. You, if you overuse something and you get almost addicted to it, you need it. You feel like you need it because you, yeah, basically try to use it as an escape because yeah. that's what it is. The same as what alcohol is. Alcohol is also um, can be used to cure things. Yeah, you, mm. it's a medicine. Basically, mm. it's part of medicine. Um, <clears throat> but um. Mariana, I, 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 I have used it, abused it, then I completely quit it, and um, I had started using it again for meditative purposes. Mm. So, <laughs> might sound funny, but I used to smoke it just on a full moon. Mm. I just sit under the moon and um, sort of try to connect with the moon. And um, every time I did that, I used to get insights. Yeah, it was cool. very, very cool. And I used to write them down and just. For me personally, um, mm. yeah. But then the other thing that I have tried in the past is DMT. Mm. The spirit molecule. Yes, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I had two experiences. One, yeah, it was it was it was amazing. It's it's like for me personally, I didn't have the. DMT. Five MEO. Uh, five MEO, that's it. I didn't have that one, so I didn't get shot out of my body. I've heard stories about it, but, <laughs> but um, what I experienced was it was almost like there was something taking over my body, but it was something good. Mm. That was the first time. It was like it, it felt like water. I, my body started feeling like water. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> that's interesting. I was like, oh, I'm not in control of this. And it was like literally fluid. doing this. Yeah, oh, yeah. wow. Could, there was music yeah. playing, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. And all I could do was laugh. Like, literally, right. just laugh. So th th there's five MEO DMT and there's like is it N MEO DMT or something? Is the other one? I can't remember what it's called, but one of them's referred to kind of as the spirit molecule, and one of them's referred to as like the the God molecule or something oh, like, like where you feel connected to God. Yeah. Okay, there must be five MEO. I think the God molecule. The God's five MEO. Maybe? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's okay. the one. I can't that, remember. Yeah. yeah. Which I wrote into the letter all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> and the second time I tried DMT was. Um, different kind of it's, it was almost like <laughs> I had a an Indian an American Indian sitting in front of me but I couldn't see him wow. it was more like it was right there and then all I could feel was he was grabbing something out of here oh wow and the funny thing was I had problems for years in this area of my body and I didn't know what it was huh. it was gone after that <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's I, I really so don't know what cool. It was. Yeah. Like a like pain. Yeah, it was a constant kind there. of pain, and uh, I went to doctors and they couldn't tell me what it was, and yeah, all sorts. And I love that. After that, it was gone, and I all that. I remember is, and it was only like a ten minute thing, and he was sitting in front of me, and I could kind of hear music, and um, and then laughing, and and yeah, and then it was gone. But I was I was there. I wasn't in plank or anything. I wasn't mm -hmm. Or anything, I was right there, and then <clears throat> my biggest one was ayahuasca. Yeah, mother ayahuasca, holy mother, the holy mother. <laughs> yeah, 
that was that was a big deal. Um, it showed me a lot. It showed me. It woken me up even more, mm. to be honest. And um, it's it's shown me parts. It's shown me the magic because mm. I was always I wanted to see more magic in my life. Yeah, and I had asked for that, and she gave it to me. Mm. She. She gave, she showed me the magic. <laughs> so um, cool. Yeah. I've seen basically the flow of life that you have to do them in mm. I've seen it. I've seen the connection. But that's what appeared to me. Everyone is different. Yeah. Everyone gets a different view. Or I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I don't want to call it a trip because it makes it sound bad. It's well, <laughs> trip is just another word for journey. You know, it's just sure. you know, it's just okay. a, it's just an experience. I like, I like journey. Yeah, yeah I mean, so journey. journey. Everyone yeah. has a different, different journey, journey yeah. yeah. Because the people I did, I did it with, everyone had something else to report after, mm. and uh, yeah, but that was definitely something. Flower of life for those that aren't aware. Yes, is that it's pattern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I was I was really afraid of this one. I, I, I really shit scared of shitting myself mm. for those who don't know um, when you drink ayahuasca you can you can you, don't purge. Actually, you can purge you will have well kind of purge uh, so you either throw up so you get a bucket supply <clears throat> right beside you because you won't be able to move that much I couldn't anyway. mm. um, some people get really bad diarrhea um, <laughs> yeah Aubrey has a Aubrey has a he has uh, a great podcast, podcast talking today. about that. His stepdad. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so funny. Yes. Um, this um, big macho man. <laughs> when when I heard himself. that podcast, I was like, "Yeah, I know what he's talking about. Oh, I know the fear." Because I was lying there thinking, "I'm gonna fucking go to the toilet." I was like, no, no, no. And I, and I like, fight it, fight yeah. it. <laughs> uh, so I didn't have to purge for whatever reason, but it, this can happen. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think you've actually told some of my story already mm. in another podcast where yeah. I saw the fingerprints everywhere. They were just everywhere. Mm. And um, after three hours of lying there, seeing the, the fingerprints, I just was like, no, hang on. Those fingerprints, what are they doing there? And then this voice in my head goes, and I can, I can do a tingle right now. <laughs> uh, like this voice in my head goes, um, you are the fingerprints of God. God experiences it through every single one of you. You are the nerve endings in the fingerprint of God. Mm. Whoa, this is so uh, amazing. I always get tingles when you say that. <laughs> I remember the first time you told me that, I was like, whoa, that's so good. And the visuals with it. So everyone, mm. sort of every single person in the room was a nerve ending. And uh, yeah, whatever we experience, we sent back to source mm. um, through this matrix of the flow of life. Yeah. So it's, it's all connected. And yeah, just personal things. One important thing that I have have always uh, have been given that night was a message, I mean, is um, <clears throat> choose your words wisely. I've been always, always, I've known that words are very, very powerful. Mm. Um, yeah. There's a reason why... Um, yeah, wise people had such a good, you know, their, their, their words were just greater. The language was so beautiful back then. Yeah. yeah. And, and you look at it now, it's almost like it's been slaughtered. Well, yeah, the, the, so. the power of words, which, which if you think about it, is incredible because it, it, is, it is to share... What the power of words is to share the ineffable with other people. It's to share experiences of, of that can't really be like told. I think it's even like, more. It's more. It's like it's a tool of creation. It is a tool of creation. Absolutely. It it's is, like it is. You know, what you speak for our evolution for yeah yeah. The most the most powerful words, mm. two words, are I am. I am. Yeah. And yeah. it is true. It is. Whatever comes after that, be careful. Like mm. literally, it's 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 your creation. Mm. You know? 
I'm and, so and pissed something off that's very wise and something that I use in my meditation every morning is just leave mm. it at that. Yeah. I am. I am. No, no, that no. is powerful in itself, you know, yeah. because it's true. Just you saying it's that, true. I felt that. I was right? like, I am. I was like, yeah. I am. Right, yeah. Stop. Yeah. You know, like, that's true. It's amazing. Like, it's, the way we articulate things now is poor. <laughs> Say the least. <laughs> um, it is a little sad to see the way that, that, that the language has been sort of butchered, I guess. But, yes. um, I find that too. Yeah. And I can see that, you know, not just here, or in, the, in English, in the English language, I can see that also when I go back to Germany because of my family. Mm. And the German they speak over there now, the kids, I don't recognize it as what I would call German. Mm, wow. Or even certain dialect that I speak over there which is Schwäbisch for all you Germans out there. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a shout out in German. Yeah. Hey. Uh, hallo, wie geht's? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I do think that, lang- that that the words we speak are very, very powerful and, and you, you know, you, you try to be around people that constantly swear, they constantly, you know, have this... Sorry. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, so I said sorry. I swear. <laughs> no, no, I think it's the intent behind it too. Mm. But um, you know, they have a, they have a certain vibe, and and people that are just a lot more aware about their words and how they use their words, they just have a different vibe. They're just yeah. a lot nicer to be around. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I learned that 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 was one of the experiences I had too. And the mm. third one, big one, a really big one that I can remember, because mm-hmm. I'm sure that was more. But uh, it was six hours of. Mm. Journeying, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was work. It was work because I was lying there for six hours and I did feel really, really sick. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't fetch. So, but it's 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 in there. It's in my it's in my mind. In my mind for sure. But um, the third one that was big, that was a personal one to me was I was basically walked into my home at the time, back then. Mm. And I was shown that everything in there is my creation. Cool. Everything. That's cool. Like, from the house I was living in, to the car I was driving, to the push bike I got in there, everything. Mm. And it is all my creation. I created this. Mm. So, don't you dare complaining about it any of it that mm. was basically the message that i because yeah. I, I was at a stage in my life back then where i was very depressed and very negative about the circumstances so, yeah because I, I i did have a tendency to get depressed a lot and mm. it was a part of my journey which i actually haven't talked about um in germany being yeah, we, yeah. that's yeah we can talk about it in another one i've got a lot to yeah. share there as well but i mean we're way over time <laughs> we are oh, <laughs> <laughs> but this has just been too good. Yeah. It's just been really, really awesome. So, um, okay. So that, so that's probably a wrap up on your. I think so. Yeah, I, I think if, to me, um, if you get called, mm. and that is the important part here, you need yeah. to be called to Mother Ayahuasca. Not don't do it because it's you know something that is big yeah. right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. As you said, with the positive thinking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very much the in thing at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if it's just an in thing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Because it can go wrong. It can. Yeah. It can. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, you know, I was, I was shit scared. Yeah. I'm, I actually made a video mm. before mm. I went That's in there. Right. Mm. And I said, okay, if I don't, if, I hope I'll be okay on the other side. <laughs> and occasionally I do look at that video and I go, holy shit, that was funny. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can't be too sure. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I came out. Okay, on the other end, much better to be honest, much better. But yeah, if you feel really, really drawn to it, do it. Mm. Find a way to go to Peru or you know, like mm. Brazil yeah. or anywhere yeah. you want to do it, do it um, properly. Do it and properly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's illegal in Australia, I believe, in the states too. And yeah, blah, like blah blah blah, of course. But anyway, we we'll get worry about that later. Yeah. Worry about that later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think maybe a couple of things to point out really quickly, just that I've learned through Aubrey, and I'm sure you'll be aware of when it comes to um, 
doing these medicines, A, to not resist, but resistance can often lead to where shit goes wrong, I hear, like bad in, journey. in the mind, yeah, yes. a bad journey. So if you sort of just allow the medicine to do its thing and, and surrender to it, that's going to be crucial. Um, B, to prepare correctly. There's a pre preparation process to go through before the ceremony. Yeah, like a um, uh, diet, mm. <coughs> which is pretty good. Claim that worth it's worth it. Doing it if you're going to get the most out of your experience. Definitely worth it. Um, and three, that's or see <laughs> that all medicine becomes poison at the wrong dose. Absolutely. So I totally agree. No, I totally agree. Mm. Just to be wary of that and just keep in mind that this is medicine and it is, you know, this isn't to go and have a trip and get lit. <laughs> this is to to explore. Because uh, we, we actually had one guy there that, in my opinion, that's what he was there for. Yeah. And, um, didn't use anything, he actually fell asleep. Mm. So, you know, my ayahuasca won't let you use it mm. just for the sake yeah. of, you know, exactly. being used. That's not cheap, so don't go waste your money. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. yeah. He was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. He's like, oh man, I wasn't pinging. It's sick of his words. <laughs> oh, dude, this has been awesome. That was really fun. Yeah. Had a long. great time. It okay. was really long. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> We'll have to do, we'll do another one, but um, I guess we'll have to leave it there for today. Oh, well, I have my questions though. Oh, questions. We've got to do the okay. questions. Yeah. I'm going to give you both because I, I like both. I'm trying okay. to decide which one to go with in the future or whether I just stick with two from now on. Okay. Um, so I guess the single best piece of life advice that you've been given or come across. Don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, just kidding. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Best I find is you are the one you've been waiting for. You are the one you've been waiting oh, Man. That's my freaking favorite. I love it. Favorito. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. That's awesome. It's like Obi always, you know, says the same thing of when you feel lost, you know, if you go looking for someone, all you're gonna find is someone who's looking for you. Yeah. You know, it's like that's true. That what you're looking for is already within you. Yeah, it's all reflected. It's all reflected. Okay, and the second one, what is the single greatest challenge or fear that you've overcome in your life? Can't say this. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, leaving the country I was comfortable in by myself and going to somewhere where I, on the plane, realized I don't understand the freaking English. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, yeah, and I forced myself to Figure understand yeah, English right. and learn it as much as I could. Mm. Not that I couldn't speak it before, but Australian English is different. <laughs> yeah, very, very different. Fuck it up, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that was uh, yeah my biggest fear, and that started on the plane. Yeah, that fear of you know. What have I just done? Yeah, right. Okay. Nice to hear. Good move, though. There you go. Oh, good, mate. It worked out, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say, your accent's so bloody good already. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're not German. <laughs> I'm Geraldian. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Cool. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank Where you. Where can people find you, bro? Me. Mm. Um, I'm on Instagram as it's underscore tide. It's underscore T-Y-D-E. That's right. And I will start cool. sooner or later a blog. Blogging, yeah. Um, yeah, but that's a bit right. of the idea. Yeah. Yes. And we'll link to that later on. Yeah, other than that, you'll find the training somewhere along the coast, I'm sure. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Gold Coast is a small <laughs> place. You'll bump into it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thank it's you. It's been good. We'll chat again soon. Thank you so much for tuning in again. If you would like to support the podcast, the best way that you can do that is to leave a review. Or if you're watching on YouTube, give it a like and leave me a comment. A huge thank you in advance if you do. I'm extremely grateful. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast as much as I did. And don't forget to tune in next week. New podcasts drop every Sunday. Big love.